Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants Hangout. Uh, my name is Joe Grabowski, and for those who don't know, we're all about bringing science, adventure, and conservation into classrooms um, throughout North America and beyond. Um, we're very excited to have Amanda Cotton joining us again. I think this is your third hangout with us, Amanda. Does that sound about right? Yeah, I think that's right. All right. Well, we're having a little trouble with connections this morning. Uh, a couple classrooms are having a little trouble coming in, so hopefully they'll be able to pop in shortly. But we do have two classes joining us right now. We have, let's take a look. We have uh, Miss French and Miss Richburg's class joining us from uh, Alabama, their grade two classroom. And then we have Mr. So's class, some grade sixes, joining us from Brampton, Ontario. And we'll give Amanda a little intro here and we'll let her take over. So uh, Amanda's a professional photographer and her specialty is underwater. Um, she's an avid scuba diver and obviously has a uh, passion for protecting our oceans. Her pictures have been published in all kinds of magazines uh, worldwide, National Geographic, Discovery, uh, CNN, Scuba Diving Magazine, Sport Diver, uh, and she uses her pictures to try and uh, get the general public to look at the beauty below the waves and, and to realize why it needs to be protected. Uh, so Amanda has just returned, sounds like just maybe a day or so from uh, Dominica with the sperm whale, so I think she's got lots of neat things to share with us today. Hey guys! Yes, so I have a bunch of new pictures and a bunch of new stories that I want to share with you. Um, I'm very lucky in my job that I get to actually go down to Dominica uh, once a year and I'm usually there for about a month to dive with the sperm whales and take people out to dive with the sperm whales and take pictures. Uh, this year I was there for 15 days and had a really good time and I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about Dominica and uh, quite a bit about sperm whales. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share lots of facts with you. A lot of things that I didn't know even as much time as I've spent in the water with the sperm whales down there. Um, but I'm always learning something new and I'm a photographer so I'm not a scientist, I'm not, a, I'm not in marine biology. Um, so the science side of things with all these different animals that I get to encounter when I'm taking pictures of them or diving with them uh, is something that's fascinating and something that's very new to me that I learn more and more each time. I didn't, I didn't go to school to learn this. Um, I went to school to learn photography. So I think it's, it's always exciting to pick up little tidbits of, of knowledge as I go along. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. so that you guys can see, let's see some cool pictures of some really cool animals. Okay, let's see. Let me hide this. Can I hide that, Joe? Hmm. Okay. I don't see anything besides the slides on our end. Okay, cool. Um, Okay, so sperm whales, Dominica. A lot of people get Dominica confused with another country called the Dominican Republic. And this is a map that shows you where Dominica is located. And as you can see on the little map in the corner, it's down in the Caribbean or the Caribbean, um, where the Caribbean and the Atlantic Oceans come together, the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. And if you look down in the far right corner, uh, you can see that in orange, that little tiny island that's highlighted there, that's Dominica. And uh, if you look up a little ways over to the left, you can see there's another place called the Dominican Republic. And that's the place that people get Dominica confused with. So I want you to, I want you to, to take note that these are two completely different places. And um, Dominica is very special because <clears throat> on one side of, of the island is the Atlantic Ocean, and on the other side is the Caribbean Sea. And you can actually go to a place called Scott's Head that's at the very southern tip of Dominica, and you can be within about 30, 40 feet of both the Caribbean Sea, or the Caribbean Sea, however you want to pronounce it, and the Atlantic Ocean, which is a really cool thing. Um, and Dominica is beautiful. And the special thing about Dominica is that we are able to go down and swim with um, an animal that resides there most of the year, and they're sperm whales, and 
there are several different families of sperm whales called pods that live down there all the time, well most of the time. And so what is a sperm whale? Well, a lot of people get confused, um, but a sperm whale is actually the largest toothed whale um, of, all, of all the cetacean species. And cetaceans are whales, dolphins, and porpoises. And you can see here the picture. This is, this is kind of a, a grouping of three juvenile sperm whales. And uh, I'm going to show you and talk to you more about their family units um, as we get further into the presentation. So sperm whales are completely different looking than most of the whales that we encounter. And they have a lot of unique features. Um, the sperm whale has a really unique blowhole, which is where they breathe. So sperm whales, like all whales, are mammals, which means they're air breathing, which means even though they live underwater, they have to come up to the surface of the ocean to be able to breathe. So when they do, at the top of their nose, they have something called a blowhole. And this is where they breathe in and out. And the sperm whale's blowhole is very unique because it's positioned way far um, at the beginning or at the end of their nose or their head. And it's actually positioned over to the left, which is something that's unique. And that actually helps us to identify if we're seeing a sperm whale out in the very far distance um, or if it's some other kind of whale because when they blow out to breathe they shoot out the water that's around the area of their blowhole and the direction of the water as it's going out into the air goes off to the left so we know oh look there's a sperm whale. The sperm whales are also very unique in that they use echolocation to do a whole bunch of different things to communicate um, to locate uh, prey and uh, to hunt and um, it's a really cool technique and I'm going to show you guys a video that you guys can actually hear a sperm whale using echolocation and this kind of shows what echolocation is about and what echolocation is is a way for them to uh, like I said um, uh, communicate or to locate their prey and to navigate when they're underwater. Um, and what they do is they make a really high-pitched noise and they shoot that high-pitched noise out into the water. And then anything that's in front of it, um, the noise will bounce off of and come back to the whale. And the way that the, the noise comes back to the whale, the whale can actually figure out how far away that object is um, what location it is, the, everything about it. So um, when they're hunting, especially, they usually dive very, very deep. And so if they're very deep in the ocean, it's probably pretty dark. So echolocation is a great way for them to be able to pick up on different things, whether it's a, a big rock face or... Um, some type of animal that they're that they're hunting off of or, or some type of animal that they're trying to feed on um, or even each other too. They echolocate to, to locate each other underwater as well. When they're feeding, um, they typically go very, very deep in the water. Now most sperm whales will feed around 3,000 feet below the surface. That's a very, very, very long ways down. And the reason why they go so deep is because their primary food source that they like to eat are squid and giant squid. And some of the squid can get, a giant squid can get up to 40 feet long. They, they can be really, really big. And this is a picture of a giant squid um, underneath the sperm whale. And you can see it's pretty big. Uh, sperm whales themselves, we'll talk about a little bit more, but sperm whales are, are big animals. They actually... Uh, the males can get up to 60, 70 feet long. So they're really big, big whales. The females don't get as large as the males. They usually get between 30 and 40 feet long. But all of them are very big. But what they do is they dive very deep down and they use the echolocation to figure out where these squid are and then they can feed on them. Now this is a video that I'm going to show you guys 
And the reason why I want to show it to you, number one, is so that you can see what a sperm whale looks like in, in person and you can see how it moves through the water. But the most unique and, and exciting thing about this video is the fact that you can hear it using echolocation. You can hear the clicking and you can hear just how loud it can be. Um, and it's kind of, it's, it's almost silly because you wouldn't think that a big, huge animal like a sperm whale would actually make this kind of sound. Um, so I'm going to play it for you twice because it's, it's a little short, but this is the first time. And I want you to listen to hear the clicking. You guys hear the clicking in that? Yeah, it came through loud and clear. Very cool. Beautiful. Yeah. So when we go diving in the water with them, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a second. But when we're in the water with them, at the end of the video, you can see that's me actually kicking the poor guy's camera. I felt bad, but um, it, when we're diving with them, sometimes we can hear it, and sometimes it's loud, and other times it's just a faint, very kind of um, quiet click. And then other times, like when the whale turned towards the person with the camera, it can be very, very loud. And you can actually feel it kind of vibrating in your chest. So I'm going to play it again so you guys can hear it one more time. Isn't that cool? Okay. So sperm whales, the sperm whales that we find uh, down off the coast of Dominica are all family units. And there are about five to nine different family units that are in the area off Dominica. Now, all sperm whales, regardless of where they're at, we can actually find sperm whales in almost every ocean and sea in the world um, that's, that's open and connected to big bodies of water, uh, except for the very northern and the very southern seas. They, they typically stay away from those areas. Um, but they all usually stay together in family units. And... Uh, the, the animals that we find off of Dominica are very special in that people have been getting to know these family units and diving with them and seeing them from whale watching boats and encountering them for decades. And so we've been able to see and track the growth and the changes in these family units. Now they're very, very much like human beings in that they stay very close to each other. Um, they are matriarchal units, which means that they're, they're the main high up animals in each family are female. And so you will have grandmothers and mothers and aunts that kind of run the show and take care of the whole family. It's very much like elephants. Elephants do the same thing. And what they do is they have a grouping, and it's usually anywhere from about 7 to 12 animals that stay in each family. And they obviously have male young too, but when the male gets to a certain age then, and he becomes an adult, then he'll actually leave that family and he'll go off to look for other sperm whales um, and sometimes connect up with another grouping of other male sperm whales that are similar to him in age uh, and they'll kind of roam around um, but the the mothers and the aunts and the daughters will always usually um, I shouldn't say always I should say usually stay with their family units so it's pretty it's, it's pretty um, 
it kind of interesting to see how similar they are. And they're very nurturing of their young. They take care of their young. The aunts and the mothers and the, the brothers and sisters, they all care for the little ones. Um, the little ones are called calves. And this is actually a picture of a calf. Now you see, if you look over on the left-hand side, this is the, the blowhole and the very tip of the nose of a little tiny calf that was probably born this season, we think. And the tail, which is called a fluke, uh, of her mother or probably her aunt. We're not exactly sure, but somebody in her family that's taking care of her. And as you can see, the mother is diving down because when the tail comes up like this, it means that the, the animal is doing a deep dive. Um, if they don't if you don't see a tail when they come up, uh, that means that they're staying at the surface. If you do see a tail that comes up, that means that they're, they're going down very deep in the ocean. And she's probably going down to feed. And what happens is, when she goes down to feed, the little baby calf is going to stay at the surface and either stay with its brothers and sisters or a babysitter or an aunt that's in the family unit. Um, or maybe it'll stay by itself, but then other family members will be close by in case it needs help. And uh, it's, it's very interesting to see the dynamic of what happens or how things work with the family because everybody's taking care of everyone, um, and even the little tiny babies. But a little tiny baby is not so little when it comes to sperm whales. This is a calf. And this one I shot last year, actually, uh, last time I was down. And this calf is about 15 feet long. So that's pretty long. That's pretty big for a little tiny baby. But the nice thing when, you, when we encounter a baby by itself, when the mom is going down to feed and there's no babysitters around, is sometimes they're much more curious and playful than the adults are. And so they'll actually come up and they'll get very close to you and they'll, they'll play and flip around and, and just like, like kids and, and are curious and want to check it out, just like you guys want to go check out everything and see what, what's, what's new and, and discover. And, and sperm whales are exactly the same way. So one of my most favorite parts of my trips to Dominica and these types of encounters with sperm whales is to see and experience them sleeping. And it's something that doesn't happen all the time. That we It happens with the whales, but we don't always get to see it. So it's a very special encounter and a very special experience. And what happens is you can see that they sleep completely vertical, which means straight up and down. And what happens is they'll all at the exact same time go head first down like the picture in the left and they'll all move into position and then slowly at the exact same time they'll all flip and turn completely vertical with their head up like the picture on the right and they'll stay in this position for sometimes up to hours now I've seen them do this where they did it for maybe 15 minutes and they're completely silent they don't move. They ha sometimes have little bubbles just coming out of their blowholes, um, but none of them make any movement. And then I've also been in the water and seen it. Seen I've seen them do it for hours. And the fascinating part of this is just the fact that they they sit in this position, but also it's the fact that they're completely silent because normally they talk to each other. Um, but what happens at the end is when they're ready to move and they, they're done sleeping, one will make a clicking noise, just two or three clicks, and they'll all start moving away at the exact same time. So it's very fascinating behavior, um, and it's very it's a very cool behavior and counter to have. Um, but as you can imagine, it's really hard to come by because if they're sleeping under the surface, and they're not coming up and, and using their blowhole to, to spray out water so that we can see that, or we're not seeing their tail at the surface. Um, it's really hard for us to be able to locate them and see this. 
Now, sperm whales, like many other animals in the ocean right now, um, are under a lot of different threats. So, as you could see, let me, let me, well, I'll, I'll show you in a second, but different sperm whale, uh, different sperm whale populations come up from, with different predators around the world. Uh, the sperm whales that we encounter in Dominica, their primary predator, predator meaning something that tries to eat them, or, um, are pilot whales. And so the pilot whales come through and try to feed on the younger calves, but the families are very protective again and usually protect against anything happening. Um, there's also different kinds of threats that animals such as sperm whales are up against in the oceans and that's human impact and our trash and our, our rubbish that, that moves into different areas of the ocean including ropes and nets and pollution and all of these things are hurting animals and Unfortunately, one of the whales that has been encountered for a while, the last three or four seasons in Dominica, um, has been impacted by this, and that's Digit. And this is Digit, and there unfortunately is a rope that's been caught around Digit's tail. And we first encountered Digit with this tail rope about a year ago, and what happened was everybody jumped on board to try to help and to see if we could help remove or at least get this dig or sorry get this rope cut off digit's tail and so there are a lot of people all around the world that are working really hard right now to come up with enough money to come up with the right equipment um, to bring in an entanglement team because there are people out in the world that their job is to go out and save different animals um, and so what they're doing is they're trying to bring people down with that training and with the right equipment so that they can try to get this rope off of Digit um, safely for both the people that are coming down to do it and for the animal itself. Now we encountered Digit again this year. We saw Digit probably every day in the water and the rope is still there unfortunately um, but there are teams in place and uh, everybody's very much trying still to free this whale from this rope. And the Digit is still moving. She's still nursing off of her mother, um, and she's still doing very, very well, all things considered that she has a rope around her, her tail. But um, all the whales are taking care of her, and all the people that love the sperm whales uh, in Dominica are still trying very hard to, to help free her. Now, like I said, we go down every year in February to go out diving with the whales. And I take groups of people out. I work with a company called Big Animals Expeditions. And we take small groups of people out to actually get in the water and snorkel or free dive with these whales. Now, it's very, very regulated. Um, you have to have a special permit to go in the water. And you have to be... Uh, follow very strict instructions and be very respectful of the animals when you're doing so. And it's one of my favorite parts of my job because I get to introduce these amazing animals to people from all over the world. And as you can see, we have some really nice close in water encounters um, with the with the fluke, the tail that's coming out with the snorkeler right behind. And the picture on the left, is actually a pretty famous whale. Her name is Can Opener. And what you probably don't realize in this picture is she's upside down. And she's being silly. She is probably the most friendly sperm whale in the whole entire world. She loves being around people. Um, she's very curious of the boats and will come up to the boats. She likes to twirl and twist and do um, rotations in the water and be silly and actually if you dive down and you rotate around in the water she'll she'll mimic you she'll copy you and she'll do the same uh, so it's a it's a it's a fun experience to 
have this big, huge animal wanting to interact with you and, and being playful. Now, Can Opener is about 15 years old, and she's a good-sized female. I'd say she's probably about 30 or so feet long, and maybe a little bit, a little bit um, shorter than that. But she's a big, big girl, and it's an absolute... Um, absolutely magical experience to be in the water with her. And you can see that there's people at the surface um, that are swimming around her. And we have really wonderful encounters with these sperm whales um, the entire time we're there. Like I said, we stay on snorkel. So I'm sure some of you have probably snorkeled, maybe in the pool, um, or in the ocean in the summertime and it's a lot of fun and it's it's a really magical experience to have all of these whales around and we get to actually get in the water when they're together grouped up like these guys are um, where they're socializing with each other and they play just like other families or kids play together so they'll roughhouse with each other and they'll play bite each other and they'll roll around and they'll and they'll they'll stay close to each other and comfort each other and it's these are all really magical experiences that we get to have. Now this is that same whale that I was just telling you about. This is Can Opener and you can see Can Opener is being really silly in the water. She was actually swimming forward and the person that's in the picture with her dived down and started twisting and rolling around and when he did that she stopped and started to twist and roll just like I said she would. Um, it's, it's, it's a funny thing to watch, um, but sperm whales are very, very smart. They actually have the largest brain out of any animal, um, and it's, it weighs almost 20 pounds. That's a really big brain. So you know that they're really smart, um, and you can see them problem solving and thinking, and um, to have that type of interaction with an animal that is so big but is so smart um, it, you feel very special being in the water with them and you want to try to share that that love that you have because of this this bond that you create with these animals with as many people as possible um, the sperm whales are very big they get anywhere the males will get anywhere from 50 to 70 feet long and the females will grow usually around 30 or 40 feet long um, and they have one of the largest eyes out of all the toothed whales, which is a pretty cool fact if you think about it. And their eyes, um, you probably saw on the babe, on the picture of the calf, um, they kind of look like human eyes a little bit, uh, but they'll follow you when you're in the water with them. So this sperm whale right here is, is definitely checking out the diver that's in the water with them and, um, and you know, having... A, that kind of experience, that type of close encounter um, with an animal that's checking you out as much as you're checking it out uh, is, is very, very cool. Now, like I said, sperm whales will dive very, very deep. Um, they, they can dive up to 9,000, 10,000 feet deep. That's super deep, but they only typically dive around 3,000 feet when they're feeding and hunting. Um, but even that, even though they can dive that deep, they're not the they're not the animal with the deepest dive. Um, there's actually a um, uh, beaked whale that has I think it's pronounced a curvier beaked whale that actually has the sperm whale beat that I believe is something like 12,000 feet that it dived. Um, so it's it must be a very different. Um, type of environment, think about how deep that really is. If, if a mile is around 5,600 feet, um, you know, these animals are diving almost two miles, can almost dive almost two miles underwater. That's a really, really long ways to be diving. And again, you get to see these really cool encounters and how they're all grouped up and and you see the one sperm whale at the top, how it's turned upside down completely. Um, and then there's a little baby that's at the very bottom underneath the, the diver. 
And this is a gentleman that takes us out with the whales. And he's, he's from Dominica, and his name is Andrew. And he has a very special bond with a lot of the different animals, but with this one particular family uh, called the Group of Seven. And he formed a very close bond to one of the male whales, in which his name was Scar, um, in, that, in that group. And he's been out diving with these animals every year. Um, for the past 15, 16, 17 years and obviously grew up in Dominica and, and was able to be out in the ocean with these animals his entire childhood and, and so it's, um, it's a very special thing to see him interacting with these whales and they actually know him. Um, it's, a, it's a unique fact to sperm whales will actually remember people, specific people. Um, I believe elephants will do the same, but when Andrew jumps in the water with these animals, um, they react differently to him, depending on which animal it is, especially Can Opener. Can Opener is a, a very big fan of Andrew, so to see the, the relationship between him and these whales is very special. Now every year for the last 10 or so years there have been a group of people that go down and um, do tons of research and are collecting a lot of information on the sperm whales in this area. Because these animals stay in this particular area and it's the same animals year after year, um, it's a great place to try to collect information and data um, on the species. And so the Dominica Sperm Whale Project, um, which is out of Canada, uh, is a phenomenal group of people, and they're doing some some pretty impressive stuff. There's actually some some information that just came out on a paper um, that was written by Shane Garrow, who is one of the founders of the Dominica Sperm Whale Project, and they've been collecting uh, data on their communication and their and their clicks and their language because they talk to each other through these clicks and they're finding out information ha about dialects and about how they communicate and ultimately it would be amazing if they could decipher the clicks and the language and for humans to be able to communicate and click back so that we could actually one day maybe even talk to these animals but if you want to learn more about the sperm whales in Dominica or just sperm whales in general or about the research that they're doing um, or about science or you want to learn how you could possibly work with sperm whales if you with that's what you want to do when you grow up or just to learn um, a great resource is is this website and I highly recommend that you go check it out because they're a great group of people and they're doing really extraordinary work in Dominica so that's it I got lots and lots and lots of information for you if you wanna if you guys have any questions for me as you can see these guys are swimming down this is one of my favorite pictures um, because they're getting ready to go into the sleeping position. So let me go back to my face. Well, Amanda, thank you so much. That's, I mean, those pictures are phenomenal. And, you know, you learn something new every day. I had no idea about that sleeping behavior, so it was really cool to see uh, those pictures. That's incredible. Yeah, it really is. I didn't know about it until... Um, I think probably last year and they did it and I, I came back up and I asked Andrew, whoa, what are they doing? They're just, they're all sitting there. They're all just all completely vertical and then he explained it to me and it's, it's a fascinating behavior. All right, very cool. Well, let's go to some questions. Before we do, I just want to give a shout out to two classrooms who are having internet issues today and weren't able to join us. Um, Mrs. Stouffer, Mrs. Todd's grade twos uh, in Florida were to join us today, but hopefully they'll get it later today and can watch the YouTube, so it's a shout out to them. And then Mrs. Suffix class, grade five from Weatherford, Texas, so hopefully if they're watching the YouTube later, hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi guys. <laughs> All right, so let's start off with um, our group of grade twos in Enterprise, Alabama. So Miss French and Miss Richburg, I'll turn your microphone on for some questions for Amanda. Hi, all right. Um, let's go ahead and 
Kara, you can ask your question. I mean, nice and loud. Oh. Loud and. Why did she choose her job? Why did you choose to be um, a uh, underwater photographer? Ah, well, that's an easy one. So. When I was when I was probably about your age, I I was already in love with the ocean. I grew up by the ocean, and so I knew that I wanted to always be around the ocean. And when I was about ten or eleven years old, my dad helped me get a camera, and I fell in love with taking pictures and uh, wanted to be able to take pictures all the time. And so I thought. As I got older and I went to college, I thought, well, what a great way to be able to combine the two things that I love the most, which was photography and being in the ocean. Cool. All right, let me see. This is a question. Addison, what's your question here? How much does sperm whales weigh? Oh, that's such a good question. So there's a there's a big difference between the fully grown male sperm whale and an adult female sperm whale. So the female sperm whales usually weigh around 15 tons. Um, wow. and, yeah, that's a lot. And the the male sperm whales can actually weigh two or three times more than that. So, so like, like 20 bars. Right. Um, go ahead, Nick. Um, how how do sperm whales sleep underwater without getting any without getting any air? Ah, so that's a very good question, actually. Well, all the questions have been great, but that was one of the things I wanted to talk about and I didn't get to. So, a sperm whale can hold its breath for a very long time. They can actually hold their breath for up to ninety minutes, um, but they usually hold it around sixty. And the very interesting part of the, the whales in Dominica is that they usually hold their breath for 45 to 47 minutes when they do a deep dive. So we can, we'll see it, we'll see a sperm whale dive down and we'll know it's doing a deep dive and we'll look at our watches and we'll set our watches to 45 minutes and usually within a couple minutes either side, that's when it pops back up. So it's yeah they they will sit there and they'll sleep and they can they can stay underwater for a long period of time and then come up and take a breath and then go right back down. All right, great questions. We'll come back. Which we'll probably have time, but let's visit our grade sixes, uh, Mr. So's class, and let them ask some questions. Your microphone's on. Okay, Adele, why don't you go and ask? Okay. See you next slide. Is that your question? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, don't go. <laughs> Have you ever been attacked while filming? No. But that's a really good question, right? Because it's a big animal. It's got big teeth. The teeth are almost they, they're almost the size of something you would think a T-Rex would have. Um, and you know, they are they they do have they're very big animals, so they could potentially hurt you if they wanted to. But I've never even felt threatened or had one try to hurt me. In fact, I was in the water just last week with um, can opener, and I got a little too close to her tail, and she was moving her tail around. And a tail could be very dangerous in the water because it's so strong. And she saw that I was close to her tail and actually slowed down her movement so that it wouldn't, so that she wouldn't hit me. So they're very smart, and, and I've never been hurt by one. Okay, Justice? Just say it nice and loud. Um, how long can you hold your breath? How, how long can you hold your breath? Not anywhere close to a sperm whale, that's for sure. <laughs> no, I can... So there's some really, really amazing people in the world that are free diving professionally, and they can hold their breath for a very long time. Um, my breath hold is not... As, as theirs, um, but I, I can hold my breath while I'm kicking really hard to, to uh, chase a whale or to try to swim down to take a picture. Um, I would say probably about a minute. Um, that's, that's not very impressive considering that there are other people that can hold their breath for four, five, six, seven, eight, ten minutes, um, but that's not me. Who is your role model and why? Oh, 
Who is my role model and why? You know what? I think, well, with photography, there's, there's, there's a guy that I started all of my um, all of my love of photography because of, and his name is Ernie Brooks, and he was one of the first people to ever take pictures underwater and make it artistic. And my other role model is a lady named Valerie Taylor, and she started diving with sharks and all kinds of really cool animals a long time ago, and I remember seeing her on TV and thinking how cool she was and how much I wanted to have her job. All right, let's jump back to our grade twos for a moment and see if they have maybe one or two more questions. Sure, how about Virginia? What do you have any? Nice and loud. So she said, how many whales have you named? Oh, well, so it's pretty silly. So down in Dominica, they have, um, they have there's maybe two or three families that have almost all the animals named and one of them is one of the families is called utensils so they have one of the whales is called spoon one of the whales is called fork um, so it's, it's pretty silly but there's I'd say there's probably about 10 whales in Dominica that are named there's fingers and digits and can opener all all names that kind of look like some type of physical marker or something that um, that can distinguish them. Like can opener, she's called can opener because on her tail, on the end of the fluke, it looks like a, a hook from a can opener. Oh. Cool. Uh, Blake, what do you have? Um, our orcas dolphins. You said our orcas dolphins. Yes, they are. And you know what's silly? I didn't know that until last year when I went diving with them in Norway. I thought they were whales, but they're actually dolphins. I did not know that. I think they now. Very cool. Um, do you want a couple more? We could ask questions all day with this class. <laughs> Let's grab one more, and then we'll visit Mr. So's class one more time. How about Tyler? How much time have you explored the whales? How many times? How many times have you gone down with the whales, Pizza? Oh, so I've I've been diving with the sperm whales in Dominica for four years, and hopefully I'll be able to do it for many more years to come. Very cool. All right, thank you, Great Twos. Awesome questions. We'll give Mr. So's class a chance to ask a couple more. And then uh, okay. we'll have to wrap up for the day. Okay. Um, uh, how uh, far down have you uh, died? Like, what's the far farthest uh, have you died? Ah, okay. So there's there's two different <laughs> kinds of diving. So like, what we do with the that's a really good question. Um, what we do with the whales because we don't have scuba or a tank or any any air that we can breathe when we go down. So it's all on one breath. And so you're at the surface and you have to hold your breath and then you dive down um, as deep as you're comfortable with and then you have to swim around and take pictures of the whales and then come back up. So I, like I said, I'm not a very good free diver and so I can't hold my breath very long. Um, so I, I'm usually, I would probably say the deepest free dive I've done is, is not very impressive. It's, I would say maybe 35 feet. Um, but there are there are people that are freedivers that hold their breath really long. They can go hundreds of feet down on one breath. That's really really impressive, right? What's your biggest fear in the ocean? Oh, pollution, trash, all the stuff that's hurting it. That's that's my biggest fear in the ocean. All the stuff that I come across when I see plastic and garbage and just all the stuff that n nobody thinks is is uh, hurting anything but then you know and they let it go or they see it on the beach and they don't pick it up or there's there's just so much trash and so much just garbage that's out there that's my biggest fear is because I know that that stuff's hurting the animals that I love so much that I want to try to protect and 
that I want our oceans to stay healthy. Um, I'm not, well, I'm not scared of anything in the ocean. I don't like crabs. <laughs> but on the last on the last time that we were we were talking we were talking about orcas um, and I, I shared that I didn't like crabs I actually had a very convincing letter um, about why crabs are important and uh, I, so I have a new appreciation for crabs I just will still stay away from crabs Okay, one more. Okay, do you have one more for Amanda. Okay. Yeah, one more. What is your greatest achievement? Oh, my greatest achievement. These are hard questions, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> okay, so, well, I have to say, uh, probably being inducted into the Women Divers Hall of Fame. It was a very special uh, thing that happened to me last year, and to be a part of a group of women who are recognized um, for their achievements and work in diving, um, it was a, a huge honor, and it was it was kind of a culmination. It was a a, um, a way for me to feel recognized for all the hard work that I been doing uh, and will hope to continue to do in the future for our oceans in particular to try to protect them. These are good questions. These are really hard. I know. I know. Thank you. Keep me on your chair. Yes, for sure. Well, Amanda, well, Amanda um, um, again, again, I can't, I can't do that. that. That was um, another great lesson. It's always fun to catch up uh, with you when you've been somewhere really cool in the world and diving and uh, snorkeling and and just taking phenomenal pictures so again I want to thank you uh, a ton for joining us today oh, you're more than welcome it's it's an absolute thrill and an honor to be asked and to be in the company of all you awesome people so you know just thank you okay perfect so I'm gonna turn on the microphones so the two classrooms can say goodbye and thank you and uh, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll bring an end to another great hangout so the microphones are on if you guys want to say goodbye. Bye. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your afternoons. Thanks so much.